Hello good day viewers. In this tutorial we are going to learn how to solve two step equations. Why do we call them two step equations? Because we need only two steps to find their solutions. In this tutorial we are going to solve question 1 to 10. You can see them. Once you have the ability to think, to reason, you will have no problem with two step equations. So the first equation here is 2x plus 4 equal to 22. The first thing to do here is to think of a number you can add to 4 to make it 22. As simple as that. And that number must be 18. So you take the whole of this 3x, you set it to be equal to 18. And you know that the relationship between 3 and x is multiplication. So you need to ask yourself again, what can I multiply by 3 to get 18? Definitely 6. So the answer is 6. This is how to solve two step equations. Then moving on to question number 2, we have a number to the top. You should group them together. You should ask yourself, what number can you divide by 4 to get 8? It is only 32 you can divide by 4 to get 8. So you set the whole of q minus 32 to be equal to 32. Next, ask yourself, what number can you subtract 32 from to get 32? It's only if that number is 64 because 64 minus 32 is equal to 32. So Q is equal to 64. You see that? Just two steps. Question number three. We have negative 7V plus 2 equals negative 47. You need to ask yourself what can you add to positive 2 to get negative 47. It is definitely negative 49. Therefore, negative 7v must be equal to negative 49. Because negative 49 plus 2 will give us negative 47. Then you need to ask yourself, what number can you multiply by negative 7 to get negative 49? First thing, you should know that you can only multiply positive number by a negative number before you could obtain a negative number. Therefore, this V must be a positive number. And I know that 7 times 7 will give us 49. So negative 7 times positive 7 will give us negative 49. This is how to reason this equation. So V will be equal to 7. Then moving on to question number 4. You see we have negative 12 multiplied by the whole of x minus 5, but the result is positive 144. You should know that whenever you multiply two negative numbers, you must get a positive number. Already this is negative, so it means that this must also be negative. And I know that 12 times 12 is 144, which implies that this x minus 4 must be negative 12 because negative 12 times negative 12 is 144. So we can simply set x plus 5 to be equal to negative 12. Then you need to ask yourself, 5 plus what number is negative 12? Definitely that number must be what? Negative 17 because negative 17 plus 5 is equal to negative 12. Once you can think, you have no problem. Therefore, x is equal to negative 17. And you know in algebra, you can simply take this number to the other side. Once it crosses over, the sign will change. It becomes negative 5. And negative 12, negative 5 is negative 17. Then another question, we have negative 8 plus a particular number because you have to group them together, both numerator and denominator x divided by 4 you should consider it as a single value then this single value plus negative 8 is negative 7 definitely that number must be 1 because negative 8 plus 1 is negative 7 so you set the whole of x divided by 4 to be equal to positive 1 next what number can be divided by 4 to get 1 it implies that that number must be 4 because 4 divided by 4 is 1. So x equal to 4. Moving on, we have 4 plus a certain number 
and the result is 0, it implies that this number right here must be negative 4 because 4 minus 4 is 0. Therefore, n divided by 5 must be negative 4. Next, what number can you divide by 5 to get negative 4? The number must be negative 20 because negative 20 divided by 5 is negative 4. Hence, n is equal to negative 20. And you can cross multiply because 5 times negative 4 is negative 20. Question number 7. We have a certain number. You should group them together. Plus 5 is equal to negative 30. So what number can you add to 5 to get negative 30? The number must be negative 35. Hence, y divided by 5 is equal to negative 35. Because negative 35 plus 5 is negative 30, right? So you need to ask yourself what number you can divide by 5 to get negative 35. If you cannot think of that number real quick, you can simply cross multiply. If you take 5, you multiply by this, you're going to get negative 175, which implies that y is equal to negative 175. And if you plug it back here, negative 175 divided by 5 will give us negative 35. As simple as that. Moving on to question number 8. What number can be divided by 2 to get 13? The number must be what? 26. Therefore, S minus 14 must be 26. Again, what number, because we are looking for S, what number can I subtract 14 from to get 26? The number must be 40, because 40 minus 14 is 26. So S is equal to 40, or you can simply add 14 to both sides. Moving on to second to the last question, um, we have 2P plus 12 equals 8P. So first of all, I know that I can take 2P to the other side to make it what? Negative. So the moment you take 2P to the other side, it becomes negative. You have 12 equal to um, 8 minus 2 is 6. So we have 6P. Then you need to ask yourself, 6 multiplied by what is equal to 12 is definitely 2. So P equals 2. You see, in all of these solutions, we have only two steps. Then the last equation here, we have 6 equal to T divided by 4 plus 2. So you should group this together. You should ask yourself what number you can add to 2 to make it 6. The number must be 4. Therefore, T divided by 4 is equal to 4. Next, what number can be divided by 4 to get 4? It must be 16. Therefore, T equals 16. Two steps. So this is how to solve two-step equations. Thank you for watching. Do share to your learning colleagues. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more exciting videos. Bye-bye.